G'day, welcome back. So, water scheme video number five, I think this one is. Um, up here at the gravity fed water intake, I'll just show you here. So this is what I have been using, just a piece of pipe, holes cut in it, you probably can't see that. I'll show you later. Uh, but what I've made up is this intake here, just made out of wood for now. The water flows down here over the grill, drops down into this box and 32 mil pipe coming out of the box at the bottom. If it works, I will um, yeah, grab some stainless steel sheet and weld up a, um, a permanent one. So, But this, this will prove the concept essentially. Um, so what we're going to do is just rip all this pipe out, take that out, take the rock out, sit this in here and uh, all going well, it should uh, work and be more self-sufficient, self-sufficient, self-cleaning. Um, because at the moment that there clogs up with silt doesn't work as well as I'd hoped so we'll give this a go. Right, here's a work in progress. We've got it flying in from the top. There's still a wee bit of water leaking down the side, but yeah, uh, through the mat, and this pipe's full, so a lot of the water's coming back out under here and uh, continuing down the creek. So we'll shoot down here and uh, see what's coming out in the pipeline. And it's self clearing. Put the gravel on there, slowly self clearing, so I can throw some up here. And then that'll just slowly work its way off. Kind of like a gold sluice. Alright, hopefully it works down a bit, bit further. <laughs> oh, that's positive. That wee flow there. So, about halfway long intakes in the gully just over there. So, we'll take that for a win, join that up, continue along the line. Hey, Snowy. Got water flowing into the settling tank behind us. It's about oh, halfway between the intake and the, no, not quite, quarter of the way between the intake and the main big tank there. So just gonna let that fill up, then hopefully it'll trickle down. We'll know more tomorrow. So just update on the water supply. We've come up here and, yes, yeah, so this is our feed pipe, so we've put a 90 there. Keep the stock away from that. That's running down to a ball cock on the tank. So that's all running pretty good. We just increased the outflow of this to a 40 mil pipe, just because inflow's under pressure. Um, to make sure it goes over there and this doesn't stay wet. But a good flow coming in. It's, um, uh, there it's there you go. 32 mil running pretty, uh, pretty full so yeah pretty happy with that for now and I've got someone Jared from just down the road local garage mechanic uh, it's hopefully gonna weld up that intake in aluminium sometime when I get it sorted and stuff but working really well for now pretty stoked
so uh part five water supply we're getting there this uh this video you've yeah, started off with some fix the water intake up there so everything's going pretty sweet uh plenty of water in the scheme so all i gotta do now fence off these pressure brake tanks uh mainly for cattle yeah so cattle don't come in here and rub the fittings and rub the intakes and the tap boxes and stuff so you saw me bash four posts in got our six by two timber here douglas fir milled on the farm uh still finding pretty good uses for that stuff and then um yeah we've got one more a lot of four posts to do i've got a one on the fence line here to do just a broken concrete post so we'll go and smack a wooden one in next door to it since we're here and um yeah that post driver wow first time really using it on the hills and um it just it's so good you just park your tractor close and then move your post driver to where you want it's no uh there's no big drama about getting your tractor in exactly the right spot so quite safe yeah yeah, all the weight's hanging out the back not over the side like a typical side mount so that makes a big difference as well but uh we'll come and do the timber work later on all right finishing textures on this water supply oh uh ram some posts the other day so just coming up putting the rails on go uh, two on two to go got a hundred mil gap between the two bottom two and 150 between the top three gaps um I'll have enough timber to do this one and I'll have to go home and grab some more to do the other one but making progress uh bulls are nearly due to come out of the cows so then the cows and cows can start rotating around these hill country so that's why I want to get this done um they're just down at right the bottom of this hill paddock at the moment and then yeah they'll come up around around past the hill house uh, on those flat paddocks and then up under this stuff so heaps of tucker yeah it's, uh, it's meant to get to 35 degrees today, I think. So getting this done in the morning and then uh, we'll see what the rest of the day brings. Got a good load of wood on here we had to shoot home and grab some more the, um yeah it started cooling off now at least we've got a bit of cloud cover we got to 35 and then yeah it just started cooling off so it's about four o'clock now so. but we just finished this fence off uh yeah it came up not too bad amazing how you can make things look pretty with a planer um yeah just got to throw some more rocks in this bit of a hole under here and and find the lid the box i made a while ago the lid disappeared in the wind so that will be down there somewhere so we'll find that before the winter before we need to cover it all up and i've got some lagging to go over these pipes too if it creates an issue so all right on to the next one right pressure brake tank number one so we did number two over there number one um yeah this, is, well, this one is a bit longer with the, I don't know, the way I had to put the posts. So we'll uh, hopefully got enough timber here. Um, don't know if I've got enough battery power in my driver uh, to finish it off, but we'll make a start anyway. I bloody ripped my singlet. You got a uh, <laughs> got a gate hook caught in it, and anyway, it's not a Kiwi Farmer singlet, so it's all right. Right, we'll make a start. Oh, power bus five. I've run out of batteries, uh, run out of nails, so we've only got three rails there to do a bit of trimming. But yeah, this one's coming along all right, not too bad. It'll keep the kettle out of it. But uh, yeah, it's knock off time for me. Uh, I need a beer. All right, another day. Got Georgia there. Hello, Georgia. <laughs> she's angry uh, no, I'm not. you're not angry okay 
So yeah, got this fence finished off. Oh, got to put a couple of nails in there. Um, yeah, and then we'll go put the drone up and I'll show you the whole scheme and then talk over that. Um, yeah, a bit of a recap and a bit of a final thoughts on what we've done. So welcome to the drone shot of the whole water scheme. So here we're flying up to where the gravity feed intake is, just up there, and then we pan around to the right. It's where the drive pipe or feed pipe runs through, and you'll see the little white box tote in the middle of the screen. That's the sediment tank. And then from there, it runs straight across the contour onto the track you see in front of you, and then runs beside the track to a tap box just below us there now and then that's where the connection for the bun well it was the bunyip pump but now i've got the petrol pump down in the creek so it's down there in the middle of the screen in that creek and that is where i slid off with the digger all those about this time last year a long time ago um yeah and then the feed pipe just runs through the middle of that track we plowed that in with the dozer when it was here up to the tank in the distance so you'll see a fair bit of broom below you as we fly along it just hasn't been grazed so the sheep tend to keep the broom down for the most part that's uh, why we want fencing and water supply because we can graze these areas properly and make sure the broom doesn't get out of control so there's our 30,000 litre storage tank just the one at this stage but we will have the space up there to do some more if we need to. So level indicator on that. So then from the 30,000 litre water tank, there's a 40 mil water pipe. So just going over the first trough there now. So 40 mil main pipe running down that track, all ploughed in. And then swinging round, this is the next fence line I need to do, and it'll be done in the next couple of months. Um, this paddock's about 20 hectares, so we want to split that up. Water on each side and we'll be able to graze the areas more effectively, control the gorse and uh, get some quality regrowth for the autumn. So it goes down that face and then you see the track on the right at the bottom, that kind of cuts along. And then down the bottom of that creek is where we would put a solar setup if we needed to and then it would come up that new fence line. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's in the future if we tend to go down that way. So. Just some quick stats while we're flying along back onto the main the main supply pipe. Uh, this scheme has watered 160 hectares with about another 11 to put in there. So fair, fair chunk of the farm um, and then it's increased the usability of another 43 hectares on an existing scheme that we, we put in. So we'll show you that right at the end. So 200 hectares of uh, reliable water now so we're just flying over another trough on the scheme and then you'll see on that little plateau there there's is um, another trough in that paddock so we tried to place the troughs where they were easy to access um, but then they would be easy for the stock to access as well so uh, we could have put them down in the middle of all the paddocks but access is, with a machine is tricky and um, extra cost and danger to try and get them there so we aired on the side of caution and just put them where we thought was, was the best. So coming up to the first pressure break tank. So that's um, the one I fenced off second. So we've dropped about 80 metres from an altitude from the main big tank. So that's our first 3,000 litre pressure break tank. And then you'll see the water pipe there. You can see the scar on the hill. So it runs straight down. And then there's another one off to the left down the face. So the main line goes around the track to the left along the contour. Then we have another trough uh, that cuts off to the right about there and then goes up and over the wee ridge and down into the, to the little saddle, the little clearing flat thing just in front of the screen in the middle of the screen there. So that one was actually quite important because it makes that paddock very usable now. There was never really any reliable water in that paddock at all. So it makes it pretty exciting for that paddock. So, um, And then, the, as I said, the main drive pipe, uh, feed pipe, is through the track on the left. Just all pulled in. 
there's the communications tower for Oxford Ag and St John's up on the right there. So it just goes, main feed pipe just goes through the through the track, a couple of troughs there in front of you. And then as we swing around here to the left, this whole paddock gully right the way down to the bottom is going to be planted in pine trees. So we're just looking at spraying options and talking to helicopter companies at the moment. We've done a fair bit of work on numbers and ETS and carbon price and all that fun stuff. So we've kind of got our ducks in a row there and that work will happen pretty, pretty shortly. So the main pipe just goes along there through the gate to the right and you see the scar going through there on the tag or the grass on the hill. So then it runs down and there's another trough in the left hand paddock as we fly along the band, the fence line here. And then from up here there is a tap box just on the scar, we've just flown over it so then as we swing around the tap box just below us and there's a water pipe that goes along that tr in the middle of that track that we're heading over now to these two troughs over here on this wee settle. So once again this was another paddock that never had any really reliable water especially in the, about now in the summertime when it starts to get a bit drier so that's made these paddocks a lot more usable and then uh, with our Oh, lots of gorse to spray. But with our change to hoggets, uh, not mating hoggets and putting them up on the hills for to grow out the ewe lands for two years, yeah, so these paddocks will become probably more usable uh, with good water supply and better fencing to grow out those ewe lambs. So just flying back over here, you'll see the trough in front of us uh, there. And then we're flying up to the second pressure brake tank. So this is the first one I fenced off. Uh, it was pretty windy, so my drones blown around a bit. Uh, and then the pipe just goes down the fence line here, all the way down to the existing 30,000 litre tank that we had just above the hill house. So this is the existing scheme that covered about 43 hectares uh, near the airstrip and the hill house. So that makes this scheme a lot more reliable. Previously, you put cattle up here and then they within a couple of weeks they would have trunk the 30,000 litres dry and you had to shift them off. So now with some reliable water we can uh, graze up here a lot more effectively and we just have that security. Water is key this time of year when everything's starting to dry off, especially with cows with calves at foot. We want them to keep milking well. So you see trough on the left, one that we've just flown over where the cows were, one on the airstrip paddock. And then flying over here, there is one on the flat paddock right in front of us. And then there is a temporary one in the right hand paddock. But this is the another block that we're looking at planting into some sort of trees. So not quoted for pines, but it could be eucalyptus trees at this stage. Uh, I've just got a few things to suss out with that. So, right, thanks very much for joining us. And this is a Pretty good overview of the whole water scheme. Any questions, chuck them down below and we'll catch you in the next video.